The government has labeled Jehovah's Witnesses as an extremist group. Of so-called extremist organization. For some time, the Russian government has claimed that Jehovah's Witnesses are extremists. Uh, when the administrative center of Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia was declared extremist late last year by the courts. Whether Jehovah's Witnesses are engaged in extremist activity. Jehovah's Witnesses of all people are subject to criticism or ban on the basis of being extremist. That we are law-abiding, peaceful citizens. The farthest thing from extremists. For example, Russia claimed that our publications and website are extremist. My husband, Ivan, was charged with organizing extremist activity. Yes. Throughout Watchtower's entire history, various governments around the world have labeled them as an, an extremist group. Uh, because of the activity and some of the practices that they have. Now, I am someone that firmly believes in religious freedom, but this does call into question exactly what that means. You know, what is religious freedom? What is a religion? Uh, at least in my mind, and maybe I'm just a little bit of a reptile brain man here, but I look at it as simple as extremism. That is someone that holds these synonyms fanatical views whether political or religious and i think when it comes to the point of activity that's when maybe regulation needs to step in at what point do we does something go from just being a view that someone holds to being an activity that they carry out that has the potential or is actively harming other people for instance if someone is out there down the street and they I don't know, want to believe that the moon is a giant cookie and that the almighty cookie monster is going to come one day and eat the moon and that's going to cause a worldwide cataclysm that ends humanity, but he's going to save all of his loyal followers and, and take him to the glorious galaxy known as Sesame Street where they can count their ABCs and one, two, threes for the rest of eternity. Okay, hey, that's great. If you wanna believe that, okay, that's totally fine. But what if that person has children and they are going to homeschool them and refuses to teach them our modern understanding of science, and history, and literature, and art, math, geography, then that becomes problematic because just because you can use your reproductive organs in such a way and birth a child doesn't mean you can do whatever you want with that child. I think that's a pretty, we all have that basic understanding. So anyway, there's a lot of questions when it comes to religious freedom, you know, what even classifies as religion, this, that, and the third. And hey, in a 15 minute video on YouTube, I'm not gonna be able to tackle all of those, those things. But the reason why this popped up in my brain is I recently watched a video from Stephen Lett. And up until now, I hadn't ever really thought too hard about Watchtower being an extremist religion, probably for the simple fact that if someone would have told me that while I was a Jehovah's Witness, I would have thought they were crazy because I was just a humble person that wanted to help other people and loved Jesus and my family and my friends. So why is that extreme? But when Stephen Lett gave this talk, and he used a very uh, specific story. Um, we don't really know if it's real or not, but he used a story that really shook me and said, you know, maybe the Jehovah's Witnesses are an extremist organization. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we are looking at a new talk from Stephen Lett, as I said before, and I just wanted to break this down and talk about some of the reasons why I think maybe we need to take a deeper look at some of these practices and doctrines and how strong these beliefs that Jehovah's Witnesses are and how that is trickling from the top down and how they're encouraged to do 
potentially some really crazy, wacky things that might not be okay in our modern society. So uh, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying this content and look forward to other content like this in the future. With all of that being said, let us look at Mr. Elastic Let. See, Jesus didn't say to pray for our daily meat or some other luxury food item. He didn't even say that we should pray for a month's supply of bread. Pray for and be content with our bread for the day. But as we know, a sizable number of Jehovah's people today are being distracted by materialism. So since this is not an imagined, but it's a real danger to Jehovah's people, let's discuss the theme, beware of the power of materialism. So I've kept his introduction in here just so we can set the scene about exactly what he's talking about. He is discussing materialism and how that's a danger for Jehovah's Witnesses. So because Jesus said to pray for your daily bread and not your daily meat, apparently that means in 2023 that you shouldn't try and have a good career, buy a new iPhone, or, you know, I don't know. How far he goes to say that we need to prioritize spiritual things over physical things is absolutely shocking. I couldn't believe it when he said it. But I do find it interesting just in the context of the cascade of videos that I've made recently in response to Watchtower's cascade of videos that they've been making asking people to donate money. Money for what? Well, money so that way they can upgrade their movie studios. Um, That doesn't really seem appropriate if you're telling people that you shouldn't be materialistic and you should be you know comfortable with the things you have watchtower produces so many videos some of them of decently high quality maybe the acting's not so good but at least the quality of the videos is pretty all right so is it really necessary and as he's going to go on to say later that we're in the last part of the last part yes he says it again of the last days why does Watchtower need to be upgrading and improving their setup and their situation while other ordinary witnesses can't? I recall the story of a sister and her two sons who were ex ex exiled to Siberia. Now, they were very poor. In fact, they were so poor, at times they had to literally eat the bark off trees to survive. But they were happy because they were all in the truth. But years passed, and the three of them had opportunity to immigrate to the United States. The two sons got excellent jobs, high-paying jobs, as machinists, but in their material prosperity, both sons fell out of the truth. In any other context, this would be considered a triumphant story uh, of someone persevering and crawling their way out of a horrible situation and finding happiness and comfort in life. It, it, movies would be, documentaries would be made, movies would be made, books would be written. And yet, in this context, when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses, it's about to be really looked down on. Now, it's important to remember that in this story that he is telling, the the two boys, uh, they haven't done anything wrong, That at least in the story he's given us. The only thing that they did was got good jobs and pursued, you know, to have a good family, a nice house, a nice car, all pretty normal activities uh, they it's not like they were starting their own drug cartel they weren't like trafficking other human beings to get their wealth they were machinists you know they weren't doing any horrible inhumane acts in order to get this wealth they were just making things that other people wanted or needed not doing anything bad so why would it be looked down upon? Well, as he says very clearly, the reason is, well, they're no longer in the truth. But how crazy of a story uh, that he's telling here. I mean, they were in such, such dire straits that they had to eat tree bark just in order to survive. 
And yet that is seen as a better position to be in. For what reason? Because they were faithfully following the governing body and whatever they said. But in their material prosperity, both sons fell out of the truth. The sister tearfully remarked, I would rather be back in Siberia eating the bark off trees to survive, but with my two sons still in the truth. Well, numerous other experiences could be related that illustrate the power of materialism. Now close your eyes and really think about this mother. Can you honestly imagine a mother that sees her two sons thriving with everything that they had been through? They were eating tree bark. Obviously, if you're that, they don't have health care, education, you know, friends, <laughs> stability in life, support system. Okay, now you transition years later and they are successful. Perhaps they have, you know, a good career and they have a family and they're going to Disneyland. They're setting up a college fund for their, for their children. You know, they have a happy, happy family. They sit down on, on Saturdays and all have dinner and are laughing and smiling and watching Netflix or going to the movies, just living a normal, happy, prosperous life. And yet, this woman looks at the situation and says, I wish we were back in the Siberian forest eating tree bark, because that would mean we were all still Jehovah's Witnesses. Is that extremist to you? If, if, if the indoctrination that Jehovah's Witnesses undergo is so strong if their belief that the governing body is correct with their predictions that the end is right around the corner, and they, they are so convinced that those things are true, that they would be willing to risk the lives of their children starving in a forest and not having a fully self-actualized happy life based completely on what the governing body and the watchtower tells them. Is that extremist to you? It is in my mind. When I think of a woman that says, no, I would rather Disneyland, pff, screw Disneyland. We don't want anything to do with that. Screw, you know, having a warm food on the table for your children. I wish we were back in a forest dying because that would mean we were all still Jehovah's Witnesses. That, I mean, you have the implications, obviously, of social isolation. Well, maybe if they would have never have seen the things in the world or never, you know, talked to anyone else and I just had kept them at home in the basement, maybe they would have still be Jehovah's Witnesses. So there's that danger, but just the health risk as well. And here, a governing body leader, Stephen Lett, is parading this story around as some sort of scare tactic for other Jehovah's Witnesses. Hey, look, this lady said she would rather eat tree bark than let her kids get involved in material things of the world. It's dangerous. Is he s spreading extremist ideas that it's better to eat tree bark and starve and die in a forest than to live a prosperous and healthy life? I think so, but maybe we can use this as a, a springboard for a further conversation on the internet, because I know some people have a lot of differing opinions on whether or not, you know, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses are an extremist organization. But the fact that this little bozo can, can be telling this story, knowing full well that it's his words and his influence and his articles and the ideas that he has in his head that are influencing people in such a way. You better hope that you are 100% right there, Stephen Lett, because if there's even a chance that you are wrong, you are quite literally with this talk 
going to ruin people's lives. People are going to take this so seriously that they pull their kids out of school. They don't want them to have any association with worldly people. You are going to mess people's lives up. So you better be 100% certain that that end is just around the corner, as you so confidently say. Jehovah, in effect, is telling us today, I'm giving you a spiritual paradise right now. Be content with that. Don't try to get your physical paradise now. I'll give you that later. But the question is, are we willing to wait on Jehovah? See, or do we, in effect, run ahead of him and try to acquire physical paradisaic conditions for ourselves right now at the expense of spiritual activity? Of, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, says there's an appointed time for everything. Well, Jehovah's appointed our time, especially these last days of the last days, shortly before the last day of this old system, not as a time to seek and uh, spend time acquiring physical comforts. Again, confidently saying that we are in the last part of the last part shortly before the last day of this system of things. That's going to have an effect on people. Don't try and get comfortable now. We're only temporary residents. We have our spiritual paradise, and we should be satisfied with that. He is chan He claims he is God's channel. He is the one that God is using to direct his thoughts and his divine plan for the ages through his lips. And his lips are flapping about saying, we're almost there, hold on, which they've been doing for generations of people now. And at what point do we as a society say, this is going to have an effect on children. This is going to ruin their lives. There could be a situation, like I said before, where maybe someone hears this and they say, well, we need to focus on spiritual activities. I mean, this happened to myself. This happened to a lot of the people that I grew up with and know where, nope, you don't need to go to school. You can just focus on you know, pioneering and going out in the ministry. Focus on the spiritual activities because those are the things that will get you through this system. Well, guess what? I'm 33 now. My, my parents are getting older. Their health is going to start declining. They're going to die. Still waiting. My brother, who still believes in all of this, is doing the same thing with his children. I have five nieces and nephews, and they're all being homeschooled because, hey, we need to focus on spiritual activity. Does that constitute abuse? Does, does that mean that you are an extremist religion? I would say pulling your children out of school so they can focus on giving tracts and pamphlets about a global real estate company and how they... People need to be part of the global real estate company in order to survive Armageddon, which is going to kill billions of people. I think forcing little five and ten year olds to do that versus going out and playing soccer with their friends. It's an it's an interesting debate. At what point do we say, no, you can't just do anything you want. You can't just teach your children anything you want. And then who do we hold accountable? Stephen Lett? Hey, Stephen, sorry, you can't tell people anything? Well, it's a complicated question, no doubt. But uh, this talk had a lot of other interesting things, so maybe I will cover some of the other aspects of that in a different video because this one is already going on pretty long. But let me know in the comments uh, below what you guys think. I was hoping to have uh, some more dialogue and conversation and just kind of see what people thought about this idea that Watchtower is an extremist a uh, religious group based on their activities and the message that they give to their people. Now, obviously, there are other aspects of this as well, especially when it comes to medical treatment. So 
that can be included in the conversation as well. But I'm curious what you guys think. So let me know down in the comments below. Try and be respectful and kind to one another. But with all of that being said, if you're still around, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe, be kind, and don't forget to smile. And you better have a good ass day.